I have lived in Ethiopia my first um, 17 years of my life. Um, I was born and raised in the war. Um, I lost my parents at the age of five. And so once we get to the orphanage, um, it was um, a really a loving um, family kind of home. We were a lot of children in it and um, the, the missionaries were very nice to us. Um, we have a very loving, caring home. Um, our times have been filled with gardening, knitting, crocheting, basketball, volleyball, board games, the war accelerator, and then the, the refugees, um, the, our missionaries um, have been told to leave the country, and so they have to leave, and they left us, and um, so I lost the family for a second time. Eritrea tried to separate himself from Ethiopia, so the government have a war with Eritrea. Um, rebels, um, they have a war with Somalia, and then within ourselves, um, a lot of people, they didn't like the communist, uh, you know, um, the idea, so they were against the government. So the government was desperate for uh, people to be soldiers, and but nobody is wanted. So their um, way of making people soldiers, they have to kidnap boys and men and anybody um, you can imagine from the rural area, small cities, um, anyone who didn't have money or anyone who didn't have anyone to speak on their behalf been a target. So being um, the only girl in the family, I'm the second oldest, so I felt like I'm responsible for my two younger brothers. My oldest brother, the first um, um, recruit, they took him and I've never seen him since. And so when my second two youngest brothers, they become 12, 13, I was so worried that they're going to take them too. And then I would live with nobody left as a family for me. And so on my, as a teenager, and <laughs> the only person responsible, you know, adult, even though I was an adult, left in the family. So I took it as my duty to protect my brothers. The only way I, I could think of is to get married and find a home for them. That way I could hide them, I could protect them. I married a guy I just met a few weeks ago and just to make a home, but that didn't work either, even though I got married and um, the war broke and so we have to be separated. So during the, the day, um, I hide, and during the night, I, I walked. And it took me about three months. Finally, I've been thrown in jail in, in Kenya, and then finally, I made it to the refugee camp in Nairobi. And I have my, um, gave a birth to my son in a refugee camp at the age of 18. And after total uh, three years and a half in Kenya, I came to United States as a refugee. The way it works is that um, they have a contract with the airlines and whichever chair that uh, seat that not sold, that's because it's a discount chair for us and so you wait for your flight, you wait, you wait and finally uh, I made it to North Dakota, United States. I have um, you know, a three-year-old son at the time when I came to United States, and then another refugee uh, family from Somalia came, and they are originally from Ethiopia, but they were refugees in Somalia. And um, they also have a little daughter. So our children became, because we are the only colored people in the whole North Dakota, I guess, at that time, and uh, became very good friends, and they played the playmates. and. Um, but they have other friends here in Minneapolis who are refugees who came from Somalia. They were in the same camp, and but they came before them. And so they wanted to be with their friends. And I didn't want my son to be alone again. And so I moved with them to Minneapolis. There are times in my life I wanted to commit a suicide. I almost killed myself. But when I look back today, I'm a very successful person. Um, my success, I would not measure it by currency, but just having a sound mind, you know, um, being a mother, being a grandmother, being a friend. I mean, who will thought? You know, I didn't lose my mind after I went through all that. 
that's a success. And I didn't give up on life. Thank God I didn't give up.